this video is going to be a special one. We're going to look at that one defining technique that takes a person with a camera and transforms them into a well-calculated photographer. Let's understand how different elements come together to make a good composition a great composition. I am going to make an artist out of you. Oh, I've been seeking forgiveness Cause I know I was wrong Oh, I'm running out of time I have to stay strong Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is part 5 of my photography tutorial series. If you're new around here and if you missed the first 4 videos, you can click on the playlist card right above me and in case it doesn't show up on your device, I'll also add links in the description. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my favorite composition techniques that will kickstart your creativity and help you get those photographs that you've always been dreaming of. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So let's get to it. Composition is the first crucial step that defines a promising photographer. After all, photography is a visual art and it's all about showing the world your perspective of it. The most common composition that a new photographer takes is a centered one. It's of course very intuitive that the center is where you place your subject. But let's steer away from there and position the subject a little to the left or a little to the right, just like this one. This off-center framing is called the rule of thirds because the frame is simply divided into three vertical columns and three horizontal rows. This imaginary grid and its four intersecting points act like a formula for subject placement. Image A shows the subject placed near one of those intersecting points and image B utilizes two of those points. The off-center composition creates negative space which shows off the environment that the subject is in or interacting with. But which side do you keep the negative space onto? If your subject is looking straight into the camera, it really doesn't matter. But if your subject is facing either left or right, you might want to keep the negative space in the direction that they're looking into. Remember that you are the artist and that you can also bend the rules sometimes. Composition should be unique after all and your photograph must depict the perspective that you envision. This photograph shows the subject looking in the opposite direction of the negative space, but it's still very appealing to look at. In addition to going left or right from the center, you can also go above or below it. Let's increase the distance between you and your subject. But how do you take your viewer's attention to that distant subject without any distractions? You need a visual element within your composition that can guide your viewer's eye to your subject. This style of composition uses leading lines to do exactly that. Let's say that you want to get rid of all the possible distractions in your frame and narrow in on just your subject. Put on a telephoto lens or move in closer to that subject so you can compose exactly what you want and eliminate every possible distraction. Fill the entire frame with your subject and let your photograph build tension, portraying emotion and drama. In addition to filling your frame, you can also bend the rules again and simply compose portions of your subject. Cropping takes away how something is normally perceived and it further portrays the photographer's artistic vision. There are no other distracting elements and you can tell a story with limited information. Let's pull out of the close-ups and start going wider again. These types of compositions include a medley of elements and additionally to your core subject, an equal amount of importance to the environment is given. Wildlife photographers use these compositions most as it showcases the animal in its natural habitat. Establishing the location that your subject is in is far more powerful than a plain close-up shot. The correct use of foregrounds is another testament to a photographer's artistic vision. Foregrounds create depth and that puts your subject in three-dimensional space. Portraits with a shallow depth of field are a great way to experiment with foregrounding. 
landscape photographers will also use foreground interests because it builds the grandeur of a scene. A large depth of field will ensure that everything is in focus and the composition will portray a distant subject whilst including space from where the photographer captured the image. The most common aspect of composition that can be confusing to a new photographer is the placement of the horizon. Where should you keep it? Well, you can keep it anywhere you want to. If you have a scene where the sky is filled with action or some sort of drama, give more importance to it and keep your horizon low. If you have a scene where the landscape is filled with action or drama, prioritize that and keep the horizon high. There'll be other times when you want to keep a perfect balance of land and sky and in those situations, you can centralize your horizon. Let's rotate straight lines until they become diagonals and see how that can be implemented into composition. In three-dimensional space, diagonal lines converge into the distance and they can help in creating depth and perspective. They can be similar to leading lines, but they're not always the same thing. In two-dimensional or in flatter space, diagonal lines can be used to create visual separation. This separation can be achieved with physical objects or with the creative use of color. Let's take the art of composition to an entirely new level by creating a sense of order through symmetry. Architecture photography does exactly that as you draw an imaginary vertical line along the center of your image. In addition to that, symmetry along the horizontal axis can also be achieved. Symmetry is further observed in landscapes as well as the fine details of nature. Push things up a notch when symmetry doesn't exist and utilize water bodies to create reflections. Apart from symmetry, you can also use various elements and geometric designs of architecture to create abstract works of art. This also creates a sense of order. Nature too is filled with various shapes, patterns and textures and there are a lot of intricate details that can be explored. You can further use the geometry of spaces as a frame within a frame. Simply shoot your subject through it or even have your subject interact with it. Composed correctly, frames within frames evoke the viewer's interest and are very compelling to look at. As a photographer, it's extremely important that you're able to make the most out of any space. Not everybody is going to see the world like you do and that's going to be your superpower. Let's get back to eliminating distractions, but this time, instead of doing it with close-ups, we are going to do it with wide compositions. Sounds tricky? Have a look at this. This is what you call minimalism. Your subject is the sole element in a wide composition and there are little to no distracting elements. Winter is a great time for minimalist compositions as well as early mornings when the surrounding distractions are covered by mist. Minimalism can also be achieved indoors by using props and backgrounds creatively. What if I told you that you could play around with different colors as part of your composition instead of having only one particular subject as your point of focus? Using a combination of loud color tones, you can create a very distinct composition. Vibrance is what our eyes are naturally attracted to. Just like directional lines, the element of color can also be used to create depth and subject separation. My favorite style of composition is in fact no single style, but rather a combination of two or more styles. This subconsciously depicts the meticulous visual thought process of a photographer that makes them a much admired artist. This black and white photograph utilizes leading lines, symmetry of space, and continues to subtly break that symmetry by positioning this couple slightly off center. Here's a photograph where the ladder leads you to the girl below 
and the hand reaching out to her becomes a foreground interest. If the hand wasn't there, the photograph would be a plain visual of the girl trying to climb up and there would be no story or emotion. In this photograph, there's symmetry and a frame within a frame through which the lone cloud is composed. The pier in this photograph creates depth with its diagonal lines and it also has foreground interest with the rocks. If you really want to shine as a photographer, composition is the very first step you need to take. It comes naturally to a few, but many have to study it, understand it and implement it. In future uploads, I'm going to talk about natural lighting, raw image processing and a lot more. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button and subscribe. Your support is going to help me build this channel and community and take it a long, long way. See you in the next one. Oh, I've been seeking forgiveness Cause I know I was wrong Oh, I'm running out of time I had to stay strong This video, this video is going to be a special one. We're going to look at that one defining technique This imaginary grid and its four intersecting points act 